So continuing our discussion about therapy for asthma, free course, and after we talked about all the medications that are used in asthma management. Now we are going to talk about the management of asthma according to the Global Initiative for Asthma Guidelines, which is abbreviated as the GINA guidelines. Now the long-term objective for asthma management is symptoms control and reduction of asthma exacerbations and reduction of airway damage and reduction of medication side effects. And it is important to know that the short-acting beta agonist only treatment in adults or adolescents is no longer recommended by GINA. And instead, all patients should receive inhaled corticosteroids either regularly or in patients with mild asthma, they are given as needed inhaled corticosteroids plus formiterol. And the reason behind that change is that many studies shown that inhaled corticosteroids containing treatment with control symptoms and reduce asthma exacerbations much better than SABA only treatment. And also, the short acting beta agonist only treatment came in 50 years ago when we were believing that the asthma is caused by bronchoconstriction only. And now, since we knew that inflammation is heavily involved in asthma, so the inhaled corticosteroids make more sense to be used since it suppresses inflammation. Now for children 6 to 11 years with mild asthma, the same applies. So taking inhaled corticosteroids whenever the short-acting beta agonist is taken is safer than the SABO only treatment. Now let's talk about the GINA treatment tracks for asthma. So the options for treatment of asthma for adults and adolescents are shown in two treatment tracks and the key difference between those tracks is the medication that is used for symptoms relief which is as needed low dose inhaled corticosteroid plus formiterol in track one which is the preferred track and the reliever is as needed short acting beta agonist or as needed inhaled corticosteroids plus short-acting beta agonist in track 2. Now the reason behind the inhaled corticosteroid plus formiterol is preferred over the SABA or the ICS SABA is because of strong evidence showing that the ICS formiterol reduced asthma exacerbations much better than the SABA or the ICS SABA done. So those are the treatment tracks for adults and adolescents older than 12 years old. Now before we start treatment, we need to confirm diagnosis and we assess symptom control and modifiable risk factors. And we assess comorbidities, inhaler technique and adherence. And we ask about the patient preferences and goals. So this is here is the track one, which is the preferred track. And this is, is the track two, which is the alternative track. Now the track one is the preferred track because of strong evidence that it reduces asthma exacerbations and controls symptoms better than the track two does. But the track two is the alternative track that is used when track one is not possible or depending on patient preferences. Now in track one, in the first and second steps, the inhaled corticosteroids plus formiterol is used as needed only. But then in step three, the ICS formiterol is used as maintenance, meaning it is used every day, but it is low dose and the reliever 
for step 3 and the other steps is as needed low dose ICS formiterol. So now we have the ICS formiterol taken as maintenance and reliever and the same applies to step 4 but this time we use medium dose maintenance ICS formiterol plus the reliever is the ICS formiterol as needed and then in step 5 we have other treatment that can be add-on like the long acting muscarinic antagonist or we refer for phenotypic assessment and we may add biological therapy and we consider the high dose inhaled corticosteroids for meterol and the reliever is the same which is the ICS for meterol as needed. Now we start in the first or the second step if the patient presenting with symptoms less than four to five days a week. Now asthma symptoms include shortness of breath, wheezing, coughing and chest tightness. But we start at step 3 if the patient is present with symptoms most days or waking with asthma once a week or more. And we start at step 4 if the patient have daily symptoms or waking with asthma once a week or more and the patient is presenting with low lung function. And there is the option for using the oral corticosteroids for short course that can be used for patients with severely uncontrolled asthma. But then in track two, in step one, we have the inhaled corticosteroids is taken whenever the short acting beta agonist is taken. So it is taken as needed. But then in step two, the inhaled corticosteroids become maintenance. So it is taken every day, but it is in low dose. And the reliever in step two and the rest of the steps is the as needed the ICS Saba or as needed Saba alone. In step three, the inhaled corticosteroid is taken with long acting beta agonist and it is in low dose. But then in step four, the dose is medium to high maintenance ICS Saba and the reliever is the same in the rest of the steps. And then in step five, we may add long acting muscarinic agonist, or we refer for phenotypic assessment, or we may add biological therapy like omalizumab, or we consider high dose ICS lava. Now this slide and the other following two slides are pulled up directly from the GINA website. Now regarding the treatment tracks for children six to 11 years, so in step one, we use low dose inhaled corticosteroid taken whenever short acting beta agonist taken. And the other options is the daily low dose inhaled corticosteroid alone. And the reliever for step one is as needed short acting beta agonist. Now in step two, the inhaled corticosteroid is used as maintenance in low dose and that means that it is taken every day. The other options is daily leukotriene receptor antagonist or low dose inhaled corticosteroid taken whenever Saba is taken. And the reliever is the same, which is as needed Saba. In step three, we may use the low dose inhaled corticosteroid plus long acting beta agonist daily or the medium dose inhaled corticosteroid is used alone daily or we use very low dose inhaled corticosteroid plus formiterol maintenance and reliever therapy. Now in step four, we use the medium dose inhaled corticosteroids long acting beta agonist, or we may use the low dose ICS formiterol maintenance and reliever. The other options is adding diatrobium or adding leukotriene receptor antagonist. Now in step three and four, in case we use any of the options, so the low dose ICS LABA or the medium dose ICS or the medium dose ICS LABA or the other options, except for the ICS formiterol in both steps, the reliever is the as needed SABA. But if we use the ICS formiterol, 
It becomes the maintenance and reliever at the same time. In step five, refer for phenotypic assessment and we may add higher dose ICS LABA or we may add a biological therapy like the anti-IgE or the anti-leukotrienes. And a last resort is considering a low dose oral corticosteroid course, but there is multiple side effects, especially growth retardation being the most significant. So here are the inhaled corticosteroids types, and then we have their doses classified into low, medium, and high, and they are classified according to adults and adolescents doses, and the children six to 11 years doses. You can pause the video here and see them for yourself. Now here are some important notes. So during ongoing treatment, the treatment can be stepped up or down along one track using the same reliever at each step, or it can be switched between tracks according to patient needs. Before stepping up, check for common problems such as incorrect inhaler technique, poor adherence to medication, and environmental exposures, and confirm that the symptoms are due to asthma. Now for most patients, the asthma treatment can be started with step one, which is either as needed low dose ICS for metrol on the preferred track or regular daily low dose ICS plus as needed SABA or ICS SABA, which is the alternative track. Now, most patients with asthma don't need higher doses of ICS because most of the steroids benefits, for example, the prevention of exacerbations is obtained at low doses. So most patients don't need higher doses of ICS, they need low doses only. Now, if the patient has troublesome asthma symptoms four to five days a week, then consider starting at step three with low dose ICS for metrol as maintenance and reliever therapy. And this is on the preferred track. And if the patient has severely uncontrolled asthma or low lung function at initial presentation, or if the initial presentation is during an acute exacerbation, then start treatment at step four with medium dose ICS for metrol, maintenance and reliever, with or without a short course of oral corticosteroids. And stepping down in treatment is considered only if the asthma has been well controlled for three months. And with that, we reached the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please give us a like, comment your ideas and questions, and subscribe. And this video is a part of a bigger class. It's called Therapy for Asthma Masterclass. You can check it out. Link will be in the description of this video.